Okay, so here we have the next problem on the board. We have a circuit given like this. We have a 150 volt source. We have a 20 ohm resistor. We have a 5 ohm resistor. We're given that the voltage drop across this resistor is 100 volts. So that's given to us. So you take a meter out and you measure it and that's what you have. And we have another resistor here, but we don't know what it is. The value is just R. The question is, find the value of R. Very simple. What is the value of this resistor up here? How many ohms is that, right? So here, in all honesty, in my opinion, is where we start to get into some circuits that are not as easy to solve. All of the circuits up until now, if you just know some basic ideas about Ohm's law, you can figure out what's going on. You can figure out the currents and the voltages. You can kind of get away with not really understanding Kirchhoff's laws. Here is the first circuit where it's very difficult to do that. Because we have a resistor here, we have two resistors in, in basically in parallel, um, which we haven't really talked too much about, but it's, it's difficult to see exactly what the current's going to do. We do know the voltage drop across one of these, but this is an unknown resistance. So this is sort of a little bit difficult to get to the answer to without using Kirchhoff's current laws. So what I recommend is anytime you see a circuit that's a little bit beyond the, the sort of basic complexity, you, what you really need to do if you haven't, if you're not already given everything in your drawing, is redraw the circuit with some labeling, right? So redraw the circuit again, you know, or you could clutter up your original drawing if you want to, but that's kind of not a good idea a lot of times. But on a test, you may not have time, so you can just use the original drawing. And draw your own labels for some other things. For instance, we know that this is a source, so current's going to come out here and it's going to go this way. We know that, because we've had a discussion on this, when the current gets to this node, it's going to go down this way and it's going to go over this way. When the current comes back around, it's going to rejoin with this one and it's going to go back to the source. So we kind of know what the current's sort of going to do. Even if we're not totally right, we have an idea. So what we need to do is redraw this guy with some labels so that we can then use Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law. If we try to use Kirchhoff's current law here at this node, what are we going to do? We don't know if this is what we're calling the current here, what we're calling the current here, what we're calling the current here. So a lot of students will look at it and they'll be like, I have no idea what to do. Well, it's kind of like in physics. And sometimes in physics, when you're given a problem, you have to draw your own diagram, and then you have to make your own labels for your own variables, and then you have to write an equation that have those variables, and then eventually you kind of see how you can solve for whatever it is you need to solve for. Same thing here. We're going to need to do some labeling so that we can write our Kirchhoff current law equations and voltage law equations um, so that we can have a chance of actually, of actually solving it. Now, in order to save a little bit of time, I'm going to do some of that right here. Instead of redrawing the guy, I'm going to just draw it here in this particular circuit. And the main reason is because this is not a very complicated circuit, but certainly if you had a large circuit with lots of labels going on everywhere, you want to make sure that you're keeping everything straight from what the problem gave you. See, the problem gave us this voltage here to what you're adding yourself. So we know there's going to be a current coming in here. So let's label this current I sub 1. You can label it whatever you want. You can label it I sub S for I sub source or I source, or you can do whatever you want. Um, I call it I sub 1, just makes it easy. It's going to come here. Some of it's going to branch down. So I'm going to call this I sub 2, and I'm going to call this I sub 3. So I've got all the currents labeled everywhere. And if you remember, I told you most of the time you're going to be writing, even though it's a Kirchhoff voltage law, you're going to be writing most of the time in terms of the currents everywhere because we know V is equal to IR, so every time we get to a voltage drop, we can always write it in terms of IR. So usually you want to have the currents labeled everywhere that you think you're going to need to have them in your circuit, because usually that's the direction you're going to take most of these problems. So we label our currents, and um, since this is Kirchhoff voltage law section of, of the course, let's go ahead and write a Kirchhoff voltage law. There's two places we can do that. We can write a Kirchhoff voltage law in this, um, this part of the circuit right here, and then we can write another one here, and then if you really wanted to, you could write a larger one. We've talked about that, but uh, you know, there's no reason, to go, no reason to go crazy. Let's just see what we can do uh, with what we have initially. So we have two different loops that we can write, so let's go ahead and do that. So let's say KVL at left loop. KVL at left loop. And let's write that equation. So we're we're we'll start here. We're going to go through the source and around. So we go up the current, and notice we're going in the direction of current flow. Current's going this way, right? So once we go through the source, we've gone negative to positive. So that's a negative sense. So it'd be negative 150, right? 
then when we go through R, we have a voltage drop across R. And, you need, and I haven't labeled it here, but you need to know that when the current flows through a resistance like this, it's plus minus. So we're traveling through a voltage drop plus to minus, so this is going to be a plus sign. And you can, instead of writing the voltage here, you'll write it as I sub 1 times R, because V is equal to IR. You're going to be doing that constantly. When you write your voltage drops everywhere, it's IR. We know I is labeled, we know R is here. They're both unknown, but that's okay. Just leave it there, you're fine. And then you're going to come around to here. Now normally you would write it as IR here. It would be I sub 2 times 20. That would be IR. But in this particular case, this problem gave us the voltage drop, so it's going to be plus 100 is equal to zero. The reason it's plus is because, again, we're going in the direction of the voltage drop, plus to minus, so we have a plus sign here. Make sure you understand that equation. It's negative here because we're going against the convention. It's positive here because we, have, we would have, it's not drawn here, but you know if you go in the direction here, it's going to be plus minus. This is plus minus, so we get plus plus everywhere. We have an IR drop here, and we're given this drop. So there we have a valid, <clears throat> we have a valid Kirchhoff voltage law equation. So you look at this and say, well, can I do anything with this? Can I solve anything here? Can I find an answer here? Well, I've got a number here, a number here. I don't know what I1 is, and I don't know what the value of the resistor is. So I have two variables, so I can't really use that as a single equation to find the answer. So I need to continue writing some sort of equations. And it's, it's kind of like in physics. I mean, you draw a picture, you've learned what what you're trying to learn in that section. So if it's buoyancy or if it's whatever, then you're writing equations with buoyancy. So you write some equations, you see what variables you have, and then eventually you'll say, oh, I can put these together. I can solve for these variables. It's the same thing here. We don't know exactly what equations we're gonna to need to write ahead of time. You just need to start writing them down and see where you end up. So we're done with this loop. Let's write one over here. So let's start down here just below the resistor. Let's go this way over and then down like this. Now notice in this case, since we're going up, we're going from minus to plus, because this voltage drop was given to us, minus to plus. That is a negative, um, negative sense. So this is gonna be at the right, if I can spell right, loop. Okay, so since we're going up like this, it's gonna be a negative 100. We go this way, we go down, and then over here, the voltage drop here. Again, we're going in the direction of the current flow, right? The direction of the current flow. So what we're going to have here, this is going to be plus, this is going to be minus, so we're going in the direction of that, so it's going to be plus I sub 3 times 5. And there's nothing else, because once we do that, we get back to where we started. There's only two terms here because of that. So negative 100 because we're going in the opposite sense, positive because we go from positive to negative voltage here, and it's IR. In this case, we use the current that we labeled. That's why it's so important to label stuff in your circuit, because we're writing our equations in terms of what we label. Much like in physics, you make your labels, you write your equations, and then you have to solve it. Here we have to make our labels. So we look at this, and we say, well, can we do anything with this equation? Um, well, I have a number here, 100. I have a 5 here, and I have only one variable here. So in this particular case, I actually can do something um, just with the second equation here. So let me solve for I sub 3. So this is the KVL. So let me kind of, kind of draw a little bracket here, and kind of a little aside to solve for it, just so we don't confuse ourselves. So what we're going to have, let's move the 100 over. So we'll have I3, 5 is equal to 100. And then we'll divide by 5. So I3 is equal to 20, after 20 amps. So I'm going to kind of, I'm not going to box it, I'm just going to kind of circle it because it's important. It doesn't find our answer. The only thing we're asked to find in this problem is the value of this resistor, right? And this certainly is not the value of a resistor. But much like any other problem, if you can find anything at all in a problem that's useful, then make sure and do it, okay? So we write this equation, we can immediately see that we can solve for I sub 3. So we know what the current is in this particular branch going off this way. We know that it's 20 amps. So we take stock of our situation. We don't know exactly where we're going to go yet, but we know that we wrote a KVL here. We have two variables, so we can't really do much with it. We wrote a KVL here, and we actually solved something. So there is another KVL that you can write in this direction, and you can probably get some more information out of that, but for right now, uh, I want to switch gears and write a Kirchhoff voltage law at this node here because ultimately 
we're trying to find the value of this resistor. You know, I've said this multiple times. All of these circuit problems become a game of writing equations until you get enough of them on paper to find what you're trying to solve for. So here we have two valid equations. I'm able to solve for something. I've used Kirchhoff voltage law for both of the main, uh, the main uh, loops that we have here. So let me go and switch gears to do a Kirchhoff current law. Kirchhoff current law at top node. At the top node which means this node up here. Remember, current flowing in is negative. So since I, I sub 1 is flowing in, it is negative. So we have negative I sub 1. I sub 2 is flowing out, so it's positive. I sub 3 is flowing out, so it's also positive, is equal to 0. OK, so that's what I have there. Uh, I have a Kirchhoff current law here, but notice I, I do know that this value is actually a number. This value is 20, right? But I don't know what I sub 1 and I sub 2 are. I don't know what this guy is and I don't know what this guy is. But then I look back at my drawing and I say, oh, but I do know what this current is. Because I was given the voltage drop across the resistor, I was given the value of the resistance. If you know the voltage drop across a resistor and you know the resistance of the resistor, then you also know the uh, current because you have Ohm's law which always applies. So let me switch gears over here and, uh, and use that fact. So what basically I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, v, v across the 20 ohm resistor is equal to IR. So the voltage across that 20 ohm resistor was 100 volts. The current we're labeling is I sub 2 and the resistance is 20. So we just divide here, and what we get is I sub 2 is equal to 5 amps. And again, I'm not going to box it. I'm just going to circle it because it's useful. So here we have a situation where because of the way the thing was drawn, we knew the voltage drop, we knew the resistance. I mean, if you had noticed that first, then you can calculate I2 right away and just sort of keep it on the side of your paper. In this particular case, you could just say, I didn't notice that at first. I wrote some equations down, and then I looked back and I said, oh, I know that. I can write that down. Now look where we are. We have a Kirchhoff current law at the top node with these variables involved. I know what I2 is because I just found it. I know what I3 is because I already had it. So when I come down here, I'll just kind of um, work under here, I guess. Let me rewrite the uh, Kirchhoff current law equation. So let me rewrite it again. The one that we just wrote was negative I1 plus I2 plus I3 is equal to 0. So we have negative I1 plus I2 is 5 plus I3, we already found, is 20 is equal to 0. So you have 25, you move it over to the other side, so you have negative I1 is equal to negative 25, so you have I1 is equal to 25, the unit is amps. And again, I'm going to circle it because this is not the answer, but it's an important result. So what we've done, based on what we have, is now we know the current here, we know the current here, and we know the current here, which is awesome, right? So then we go back and look at the equations that we've written and see if we have enough information to solve it. <clears throat> we've already used this equation. We've already used this equation. We go back to the other one and we say, okay, this is a number. This is a number. Now I know what I1 is in a number, right? So now I can find the resistance because it's the only other variable there. So let me rewrite that equation. That guy that we, used, that we wrote down is negative 150 plus I1R plus 100 is equal to zero. Now we know what I1 is. So we have negative 150 plus 25R plus 100 is equal to zero. So here when we add, add these guys, we're going to get negative 50, right? So we have negative 50 plus 25R is equal to zero. Move the 50 over, so we have 25R is equal to 50. And the value of the resistor R is 2, the unit, ohms because resistance is always in ohms. So the value of that resistor is 2 ohms.